Hey teens, I'm Miss Abby, your teen services librarian for the Slidell branches of the St. Tiffany Parish Library. And today we are going to be making the dream catcher craft from your November Arts and Crafts tote. Before we get started, let's go over what the Arts and Crafts tote is. So the Arts and Crafts tote is one of our two free teen subscription totes that we have available here at the St. Timothy Parish Library for teens between the ages of 12 and 18. So the Arts and Crafts tote is available between the 15th and the 30th of every month for sign up and you receive it the following month between the 15th and 30th. So if you sign up now, November 15th through the 30th, you'll receive December's teen tote between the 15th and the 30th. Similarly, we have the book tote. In the book tote, you register for between the 1st and the 15th of every month to receive the following month between the 1st and the 15th. When you register for that tote, you'll be asked to pick between two themes for the month, and you will receive two books to be checked out that fit that theme. You'll have some swag, some snacks, sometimes a cool gift. It just depends on the month that we're doing and some fun activities to do, a nice bookmark, that kind of thing. And the bookmark will have a link to book list that you can look at for more books that fit that topic. So if you're interested in that, you can also explore the wonderful book list that we have available at the St. Tony Parish Library's team page. Let's go over what we need for the Dreamcatcher. So in your teen tote, you will have all of these materials. If you did not get a teen tote, you can certainly make this from a quick trip to your local craft store. So in your tote, you will have a hoop, some leather cording. I have it wrapped on a popsicle stick. You'll see why later. An extra popsicle stick. I'll explain why that's there as well. A skein of embroidery thread. Some feathers. Tape on a piece of wax paper. And some beads. Not in your tote, but you will need a pair of scissors. To begin, let's start with your metal hoop and your leather cording. So I have a piece of tape on your leather cording that's just to hold it on so it doesn't come unraveled. When you pull it off, you're going to see that it's going to start coming undone. And you might want to save this tape to this side. You do have more tape you can use, but why waste that piece if you don't have to? So I'm going to undo a little bit of this because I want kind of a six inch little tail. So about this much when I start. So I'm going to come right here on the top or wherever you want. It doesn't matter where you begin. And I'm going to start looping my yarn around my cord around the hoop. Now you want to make sure you don't twist the cording so that it lays flat. Oop, I got a little ahead of myself, doing a few too many. Let's back it up. All right, so you wanna make sure you don't twist the cording so it can lay flat. And I'm gonna do two or three little sections here. And then I'm gonna take that tape, holding my cords tight, and I'm gonna tape that part down. You're gonna remove this tape later so it does not have to be perfect. You just kinda of want it to where it'll hold that cording so you don't have to hold everything at one time. Trust me, you'll see how much easier it's going to be. So I have that kind of firmly done, taped down, just like that. And then I'm gonna continue with my cord wrapping it around. So I have it on the popsicle stick to make it just a little bit easier for you. Um, so it doesn't get tangled as you go. And as you're going, make sure you keep these cords nice and tight together. You can certainly wrap first and then um, push it down a little bit. Just don't do too many at a time or you won't be able to push it down. So let's do one, two. All right, so we're gonna keep going. 
just like that. And make sure this doesn't get tangled. Again, that's why it's on this. So you don't have to keep uh, gathering it up. And you could hold it all in one hand if you want. I like to just continue wrapping and then make sure I undo it after like three or four. And you're going to keep going. You want to keep it nice and tight just like that. See, I'll push that down real quick to keep it nice and tight. That's all you have to do. And we're going to do that until you get back up towards this T. All right, so I'm going to take a second and I'm going to get it all the way to the end. Do this at your pace. It doesn't all have to be done right away. Um, if you want to do it in segments and then come back to it, just use a piece of your tape to secure where you're at and then come back later and remove that tape and start again. All right, so I am all the way back up to the top of mine, and I've kept a nice tight um, ring going around. All the leather has been pretty close. You can't really see the ring, but I'm gonna go around just one more time and set a segment at a time, because if I try to push from here, it won't close up any gaps over here, because it won't have enough room to move. So I'm gonna kinda of go around in a few segments at a time and make sure it's nice and tight. Turn it a little bit. And you can see how when I started doing that, I now have a bit of a gap. Which if you want it a little looser and you wanna be able to see that silver, you can certainly do that if that's the aesthetic that you like. Um, I want mine to be completely covered. I don't wanna be able to see anything. So I have to do a few more wraps to get back to the tape, right? And so holding that first piece pretty tight, I'm going to take my tape off. And your tape might have gotten a little twisted. That's okay. It will eventually come off. You can use your scissors to help cut it off if you need to. Just make sure you don't wrap your leather over the tape or you'll never get that off. Okay, so now that I have that removed, I'm going to close up my gap. And if you notice, I kept all of my leather flat and I didn't let any twist happen. If you do that, it's not going to lay right against the ring. And, um, you know, you're going to be able to see a little bit of the silver and it just won't be as clean and it'll be harder to do the thread later. So I have it completely wrapped. Let's pull the two tails up, and I have two nice long tails. I have plenty of string. You have the same amount of cording that I've got, so you'll have plenty of room to do the same thing. And now to secure it so it doesn't just become unraveled, I'm going to hold my ring tight, and I'm going to hold my leather tight, and I'm going to do an overhand knot. So I just use my finger to wrap it over it. So I have this nice loop, and then I just feed the leather cording back through that loop. And then I'm gonna hold it nice and tight, and I'm gonna shimmy that knot as close to the ring as I can get it. So it might take you a minute. We're just gonna shimmy that knot down as close to this ring as we can go. So I need a little more slack. So that I can pull this through and I'm going to pull that knot down and you can get a parental unit to help you with this if you're struggling. If you don't get it too as close as you'd like you can certainly spread some of that extra space around the ring so it won't look so startling but try to get it as close as you can. So I got it down pretty good I think. I have a nice little overhand. It's pretty close to the ring. So now that that's finished up, I can move on to my next piece. And if you want to go ahead and secure this and do an overhand knot at the top, you can. And then trim your excess leather. Or you can save that to the end. I kind of want this out of the way. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do 
another overhand knot towards the top of my cording. And you wanna have enough on the other side so that the tail can come back through. So again, I wrapped it over my finger and then I'm just gonna pull it back through the hole that was created by wrapping it around my finger and make sure both of them go through. Ooh, I went a little short, so it didn't go through quite as well. So let's make sure both of them go through. And then you just put that knot wherever you think. So that's plenty long enough, I think, to hang. If you want it on a doorknob, make sure you leave enough room to be able to put it on your doorknob. If you want to hang it on your wall, which is more traditional, or your bed headboard, which is more traditional, then you don't need as long of a string of a cord. So then I'm just going to trim this up a little bit. And there we go. So it's really important that you know what you're going to do with it. Uh, you can hang it on your bulletin board with a thumbtack if you'd like. I have mine hanging on a thumbtack. Uh, you can get those hooks that you can put on the wall and not damage the wall. Make sure you talk to a parental unit before you put anything on your wall. But there you go. So that's the first part of your dream catcher. Now that you have your hoop completely covered in the leather and the leather secured at the top, we're going to start wrapping our web. So this part is a little more complicated. And again, if you need to set it down and come back to it later, you can. So for this, you're gonna need your skein of yarn. Yours is gonna start looking like this. My papers came off of this one, so I just wrapped it with a bit of that wax paper and some of that tape that you have in your bag. You can certainly use that if these black pieces pop off. Uh, we are leaving this on because it makes it easier to pull the the thread out without it becoming tangled. And I'm gonna show you that as we go along. So we're gonna take one end of our thread here, and we're gonna decide which side of this we want to be our back side. I kinda of like the cool double, double knot look here. So I think this side can be my back side. So I'm gonna take my thread, and I'm gonna go around the base of that knot I made. And I'm just going to tie it like you do to tie your shoe. So one end over the other, pull through the loop, and pull down firm, nice and tight. And we're going to do that one more time. Crisscross through the loop, tight. Okay? And that should, you should be able to pull on that and nothing come loose. Right, just like that. And this tail, you can go ahead and trim if you'd like, just so it's out the way. You can trim it at the end if you want. Just be careful not to talk, uh, not to cut that knot. All right, so now we're ready to start our wrapping. So when I wrap around this, it's important to decide how many wraps I'd like to have for my web before I begin because I want to know about how far apart they need to be. So on the other one, I did about an inch between them because I wanted 12 spots, 12 loops off. You don't have to do 12 loop offs. If you want to do six and just have wide webbing, you can do that as well. Uh, I like the 12. I thought it looked really good. So I think I'm going to try to do that again. So I'm going to turn my hoop around to the front. And this is how I'm going to start my web. And I'm going to go counterclockwise instead of clockwise. If you like going clockwise, you can do that as well. I'm left-handed, and I find it easier to go this way. So I'm going to pull my skein of thread through the hoop. I'm going to go over the top and then back through this thread loop. And you can make it as big as you want in the beginning and then just shimmy that thread down a little bit if you'd like to. Um, that just makes it easier. And you want a little slack in this because you're going to need to come back through it later. But you also, it's, it's, it needs to also be tight. Um, so I know that sounds really weird. Like I want it tight, but also you need it loose. But you have to be able to do thread through it later. 
So try to keep this kind of loop tight here on the ring and then enough slack to be able to pull through later. Okay, so again, we're gonna go over the loop, over the hoop and through the loop, just like that. I'm gonna shimmy this one up as well. Okay, and again, over the hoop, through the loop. And you know, dream catchers are kind of interesting. They have a couple different stories behind them. Most of them revolve around a spider. So I'm gonna say a Native American name and if I have it wrong, I apologize. I have been practicing and hopefully I say it right. Uh, the Ojibwe tribe believes that there was a spider, a bashki, and the Abashki was the protector of the Ojibwe infants and children. And he, they would, the spider would weave webs to protect the kids at night while they were dreaming so the bad spirits couldn't enter into their dreams. And when the Native Americans started migrating, it became too much of a job for Abashki to do so the people started the women mainly started forming these dream catchers to relieve some of that burden and make it easier. There's another story that the Abashki, the spider, would weave a web in an old woman's home every night and one night her grandson saw the spider and tried to squish it. And the grandmother stopped the grandson and uh, told him not to kill the spider. And the grandson, of course, argued with her. And finally, he left and went home. And the spider thanked the grandmother and told the grandmother that every night she would sp uh, weave a special rib for the grandmother so the grandmother would be protected and not have bad dreams and have bad spirits in her home. I thought those were kind of neat. So traditionally, dream catchers would be made out of whatever they had, really. So they would weave it out of straw or leaves, whatever, for the hoop. And the hoop was important because a lot of people believed that the circle was the circle of life or brought unity. Um, it was a symbol of unity and, and peace. And then the web would be where the bad dreams would get caught and stuck and not able to come out. And then also the hole in the center of the dream catcher is where the good dreams are able to escape so they can come another day. And they had the feathers so that the good dreams could slide down the dream catcher and be protected and safe. And it was a soft way for it to, for them to go down. So I thought that was kind of neat. They also used like if they had any clay beads, they would put the beads on the dream catcher. They also would use arrowheads, which I thought was kind of neat. And there's some mixed stories about that, and I don't want to give misinformation, but um, there are some, some of the stories or a lot of the stories are say that the arrowheads were for directional purposes. I thought that was kind of neat. And traditional, uh, traditional dream catchers are not like the dream catchers we have today or that you can buy from the store. Of course, they were made out of different materials, what they had. They didn't have uh, leather cord that they could go purchase from Michaels to make this or nice colorful skeins of thread. So they are definitely not the same that they used to be back then. And we, of course, don't want to insult a whole culture's um, traditions. That's what this is. But we definitely want to continue them. And I think doing it in the most respectful way, making a nice dream catcher and trying to keep the stories alive is probably the nicest way we can do or the best way we can do that. <clears throat> So I wanted to have 12, so let's see how many got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I 
did a few too many, one too many, but that's okay. We'll do, I think 13 is considered a bad number. So let's see if we can take one of these out and we're going to scooch them down a little bit because I don't want to, I don't want to have a bad, <laughs> I don't want to start my dream catcher on a bad note, right? So we're going to start scooching them down and you should start in the beginning Actually, we don't want to scooch them down. We want to scooch them over. So we're going to start scooching them from the beginning because we can add a little more slack here and then tighten it up as we go. So let's come through, add a little slack, and then we can tighten it up and we'll get them where we need them to be. So I need these rings to be just a tad bit wider than I had them. So we're going to go back the other way. We're just going to keep scooching because I want this one about here because I'm going to end my last one here. And they don't have to be perfectly separated uh, an inch and a half or whatever for everything. I did that with my last one. I used a ruler and it came out really nice and I really liked it. But for this one, I think I'm going to be a little more random. Uh, I'm going to try to eyeball it. And of course I want it as you know, nice and pretty as I can get it, but they don't have to all be exactly an inch or an inch and a half apart. They can be a little more, a little more free flowing, which I think is what traditional ones generally were because they were moms and grandmothers putting them together and they didn't necessarily have a ruler. Now they might've been pretty good at eyeballing it, but I don't think they had like a tape measure. So I'm all the way through. I've tightened up some of this back up. And I had 11, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11. I did not miscount. So when I finish my last one, my 12, I'm going to come back through this original first loop I made. And that's going to make. Oh no, wait, before we get to there, we're gonna come up the top on the other side of this knot, excuse me, the other side of this knot, and then back through the loop. And that's gonna create our 12th one. Got a little confused there, but that's okay, because we saved it, right? Okay, now that we have our first row around and everything is pretty tight. There's a little bit of slack in my thread, but not a whole ton. Everything looks pretty, pretty flush up to the ring. I'm going to come back through and to do my second row, I'm going to go through the first. So the same as I did before, but instead of the hoop, I'm using the thread. So I'm going to go over the thread So this part gets a little tricky because I'm trying to force all of this through. And this is where that paper really helps because I was able to fold and come in at one of the paper pieces. And also, if you've noticed, as I'm pulling the thread out, I'm pulling it, sorry, I got a little, little jammed here. I'm pulling it through the paper and that's keeping it from getting knotted. It's coming straight out when I pull it from the paper. So just like, So that's nice because it keeps it from getting too tangled. So the same with the first one. We kind of want to keep this with a little bit of slack, but not too much because we want to be able to feed back through it later, but we also need it to look nice and tight and clean. So this first loop is not going to look fantastic, right? Because we're going to come back to it and latch on to that loop. But we want our loop to be about the middle of that first thread. And we're going to keep going around just like that. So through the loop and then back through the loop we created. So like a little overhand knot kind of on this. We're just going to keep going just like that. 
pulled a little too much out, so I'm gonna wrap it up a little bit. I did that uh, to show y'all what I was doing, but I kind of hurt myself a little bit doing that. That's okay. So we're gonna go through the loop and then back through our hole. And again, we want to be about halfway through the thread. Okay. And you can kind of see it start to take shape. Pulling it a little taut here so you can see it. And we want to keep that tension kind of going. You don't want it super tight, but you need to keep some tension so that you can see the shape going through. That's going to be important later because you're not going to be able to pull all the slack out of it uh, once you get to the center. If you have slack out here, it's not going to pull very easily. So we're going to keep going just like that. So we're going to go out through the hoop. Then we're going to go through this loop here. And then back through our thread. So it'll pull just like that. Hopefully you were able to see that pretty clearly. And some of these threads might move and that's okay. You just put it back where you want it to be. You might need to add a little slack to get it there and then pull it again. So once again, <clears throat> I pulled it back out to the top and then I'm gonna go through this loop here. And I like to wrap it with using my fingers uh, my fingers are holding this thread down, and that just makes it easier to pull it back through here, just like that, so that I create that loop hanging onto that thread, that connection. And we're just going to keep going all the way around through our second row. Just like that. And this is the technique we're basically using throughout this entire dream catcher. There are other uh, web creations or, or other designs that you can use. I am a big believer in learning the basic before going crazy, but you can definitely Google those if you want to see some neat ones. Uh, they do like flower patterns. They've done stars, neat looking mandelas, but those are definitely a lot more work than this basic one we're doing. So I did 12 points around my circle. If you did less, these holes are gonna be much bigger. If you did more, these holes are gonna be much smaller. I wouldn't do any, any more than 12 because these holes are kind of small and it's gonna make it hard to get this thread skein through any any smaller than this. And I do believe, I don't have all of the information about that with me right now, but you can definitely look that up. Um, I do believe that they had certain beliefs depending on how many loops you had around it. So numbers are very important in a lot of people's beliefs. And that would be really cool to kind of look up later if you wanted to delve deeper into this. So I'm almost back up to my top. And it takes a minute to do this. And my first one, it was a little bit harder because I had never done this before. I've done a couple of them, so it's gotten easier with every one that I've done. And that's the point of doing these teen crafts, right? It's showing you a new hobby if you like doing it. And people do sell these on like Etsy and they add cool baubles and different ribbons to them and make them look really neat. I think I messed this one up. I did. All right, let's go back and fix that. I think I fixed it. There we go. I forgot to go back through my thread that I... Yep. Okay. 
There we go. All right, so now I'm back up to the top. I'm back up to the top. So what I'm gonna do to start my third row is to go back through this first loop I created at the top, the one that didn't quite look right. And I'm gonna go back through that one and that's gonna start my third row. And these are gonna get tighter as you go around because the holes are smaller. So it'll get a little more difficult as we go. So we're gonna go about here. And I think I do typically four or five rows. We'll see how many we get through. And if you don't want to do that many, you don't have to. You can have a big old hole in your drain catcher if that's what you like. It's up to you. Traditionally, the hole was smaller so that only the good dreams could get through. So do keep that in mind. And it was also believed that the bad dreams would be caught and then the sun in the morning would perish them. So they would, they would Burnt, be burnt up in the sun or whatever the belief was, the sun would take care of them in the morning. And I thought that was kind of neat because Native Americans, or most uh, stories have a lot to do with the sun or the moon. A lot of their beliefs ran around that, or even in different mythologies, the sun and the moon is very important. Right, right, we're about halfway through this third row. And we're just going to keep going around. Up and through. And through. And usually what I would do is stop the video, do a couple rounds, and then come back on so that you we could get to the, the finished part. But I thought it was important that you saw me do at least a few of these rows because it can be hard to get this method down. So I wanted you all to be able to see it multiple times and as clearly as possible. So this video is gonna be longer than some of our others, but I'm hoping that in doing that, your dream catchers all come out really nice because I'm kind of excited about this, being able to share this with y'all. almost all the way around for the third time. And like I've said before, if you get to a point like you only had 30 minutes and now you got to go to brother's baseball game or something for yourself, that's okay. Put it down. When you come back, make sure all of your threads are tight again and then keep going. It's, this is definitely one of those you can set to the side. Just remember, if you're setting it to the side before your leather is finished being wrapped, you need to tape that down because so, it will become unwrapped rather quickly. That's what one of the reasons all that tape is in your bag for. There's another reason, and we'll get to that. It's to help with the feather application. And also, if you want to put beads on your string, you may want to use it um, over the top end of your string to make it easier to thread the beads. Or if mom has a sewing needle you can borrow, uh, definitely ask permission to just go stick mama's needles, but cause you know, you don't know what they were supposed to be used for or whatnot. You can use a needle to help thread those beads too. So I think our dream catcher is starting to take shape. Oh, I thought I skipped one, but I didn't. My thread just went over to the end for a little bit. So now I'm all the way back up to the top. So I'm gonna start my fourth row. 
again using this first loop and coming all the way around. And now that y'all have seen me do about three rows, you should know the basic pattern. So I'm going to do a couple more rows and then I'm going to come back and show you how to add the beads onto it. All right, so I have gone around the dream catcher. I've done about five different rows. And I'm going to do one more row. Before I do my sixth row, I want to add some beads. Well, of course, it's going to be real hard to add beads with all of this extra. So I'm going to pull off probably a little more string than I need, thread than I need, just to make sure I have enough to go around. Say about that much. So that I can string beads into the center of my dream catcher. So I'm going to cut that off. And so this part can get a little tricky. And I actually just came up with a solution that I didn't think of earlier, so I did not put it in your bags. But if you happen to have a paper clip, then you may want to do what I'm about to do. Or if you happen to have a sewing needle and your parental unit is okay with you using that, it would be cool too. So I'm just going to take my paper clip that I straightened and I'm going to put it on a piece of tape. And again, you all have several pieces of tape. Now you can do this. If you don't want to do this this way, you can definitely put some tape around the end of your thread and make it like an eyelet for your tennis shoe. The problem is those small beads that you do have like this will not go through it. It will not go through that. It'll be too thick. So I'm going to put my thread right against my paper clip and then I'm going to try to wrap this as tightly as I can. I'm actually going to cut my tape because I don't need this much tape. Um, you know, the bulkier it is, the worse it's going to be. So I'm going to fold it up. I'm going to try to get as close to this paper clip as possible. Get me yarn in there real tight. And then I'm going to trim up the excess. And hope for the best. No. I'm going to trim up the excess and it should work. I did a preliminary test, so I'm pretty confident about this. Just when you're trimming up your tape, be careful not to cut your thread because then you're going to have to try again. All right. Move my tape. So it doesn't get stuck on everything. When I'm crafting, I like to kind of keep a clean area if possible. So I have all of my beads here. I have a bunch more too, but I figure these would be really nice on the center pieces. So I'm going to start going around and adding some beads. And you may have to push them down. But they should go pretty easily down that. And it's a neat little trick. Unfortunately, I didn't think of it the first time. And that's going to make your little paper clip rig or needle, if you happen to have one, is going to go a little bit faster now because we're going to go through our thread and it's going to go a little cleaner and a little easier because instead of pulling that whole skein of thread, we're just pulling one simple but be careful it does not get knotted now. So you wanna to try to keep it clean and easy so you don't end up with knots on accident. Okay. All right. So now I have a little bead. So I'm gonna keep doing that around. See maybe I have some clear beads too. So maybe we'll do a clear bead for the next one. You may have to push it down your paper clip, but it should go. Okay, and remember to keep it nice and tight. If you want to do more than one bead on your yarn, 
You can, that is absolutely okay. Or if you do this sixth round and you decide you want a seventh round with more beads, you can do that too. If you started doing this in the beginning and you were like, oh, I want beads in the front, go for it. Um, but it's going to take a lot of extra yarn and you may are a lot more thread than what I'm pulling through now. And you can see how much, a little bit more work. So if you have that much more, you know, thread going through, it'll take a lot more care to keep it from getting all knotted. Okay, so I did a round all the way around the inside. That was my sixth round. And I did it with every other one having a bead on it. So I went completely around and did every single one and then every other one I skipped and put another bead. So I really like the way that it came out, but I feel like it could use maybe another round. Not sure. What I think I might do for this one is skipping every other one and then putting a bead on that, meaning not doing every one. So I'm gonna skip the one here with a bead on it. And I'm gonna put a bead, I'm gonna skip the one with the bead on it and I'm gonna go here. Let's see, let's see what it come, looks like because I can always read undo it, right? These are simple knots, they come out pretty easily. So they shouldn't be a problem. So let's do every other one and see what that looks like. Or if you wanted to do two beads on each each one and then go in the middle of them and tie another, you could do that too. I'm gonna see what this looks like. Cause all I have to do is put my paper clip back through to undo it. Just be careful not to get your, your thread all knotted up. And if a small one come, comes in it, Usually they're pretty easy to pick out. Let's move that. Let's see. Oh, I kind of like this, I think. And maybe we'll do a an eighth row with beads on it too. Maybe we can use some of the bigger beads. Let's see. Oop. I forgot to go back through, so I'm gonna fix that. Tighten my circle. Just like you're sewing. Okay, now I'm all the way back to the top. So I can certainly leave it like this and tie it off if I want. Or if I want a little more pizzazz, I can do another round here in the center. And you know, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm gonna try it out. You can certainly stop your own if you'd like, right where you're at. I think I'm gonna do some bigger beads in the middle. Maybe make it a little more decorative. Let's see what we can we can do here. Do a little reset. See, this is why I did a little extra thread than I thought I was gonna need so that if I wanted to do a few more rounds, I could. Or even if I got a knot in the end somewhere, I could fix it. Let's see, I kind of like that with those three beads there. So let's see, let's keep doing that because I think this is kind of neat. And you definitely plan out what you want to do with your beads ahead of time. Um, everybody got 
like a handful of beads, so you should have plenty to kind of get creative with. I don't know if this bead won't fit. So let's see, maybe a different one. Oop, that took some of my tape with it. Let's see. This one. Well, one second while I pick out another bead, a new bead. Then a little different, we're not using. One of these maybe, let's see. Let's see if this works. Hmm. Oh, I see what had happened. My tape got bunched up on here, so I'm trying to pull it through a whole bunch of tape. Let's see. There we go. And if that happens, you can definitely snip the end and then retape it. That is absolutely a possibility. I'm almost done, so I want to see if I can just get it through done. And then I'm going to redo this same contraption, but on a different piece of thread. And you will see that when we get to it. Yeah, this isn't working. See if we can make this a little bit better. See if we can get through just a little bit more. All right, I took a quick break and re did my needle, and it is now working. So I just took the old tape off and re taped it, it is going really well. Let's see, let's finish this off. We only got a little bit more to go. Some of these smaller beads may take a bit to get down your um, little hook. All right. Just threading along here. And again, you don't have to go to this step if you don't want to, if you wanted to end it before the beads went on or just do a couple rows without beads, you can certainly do that. After this one, I'm gonna show you how to end it off. I just wanted to put a little extra pizzazz on mine. Any of y'all who've come into the library and met me would totally understand that. I'm really loving the blue with this black leather cording. It's really cute. And I have some blue, white, and black feathers that I'm going to play around with and see how we like them to finish off the end. All right, just needed to go a little bit further. There we go. So as you can see, this paper clip works pretty well. You do have to push on it some. Oop, some of my thread came out. I spoke too soon. Spoke entirely too soon. Hold on. Okay, since I was having a little bit of trouble, I just went ahead and went around and beaded my entire center. And now we're ready to tie off. So I can 
can see that. Kind of put that through. So I went through all the way to the center one. And what I'm going to do is come to this next knot right here. And I'm going to go into my knot and back through. And I'm going to pull real tight and try to kind of tighten up that circle here. And then I'm going to do that one more time. Coming through to the center here. And now when I do it, I'm gonna go through one, two. And I'm gonna do one more, a third, just for good measure. And I'm going to tighten that as tight as I can get it. I'm going to keep pulling until it gets nice and tight because I want that knot to be nice and snug. And it might take you a minute to get it exactly, exactly how you would like it. Okay. Now I think that's about as snug as it's gonna get. Right. And that is my dream catcher. So all these beads in the middle kind of made it look more like an oval. And you don't have to do this many beads. I kind of like how it looks on the outside here with just a few here and there. And I kind of wish I had left it like that. But that's okay. The center here with all these beads is pretty too. It does sag a little bit from the weight of the beads. So to keep that in mind, that if you're going to do this, um, that that will be the result. All right, so I'm ready to trim mine. That is all she wrote. And that is the center portion of my dream catcher. I'm gonna slide these beads out to the side. All right, now that we have all of our weaving done, it is time to make the tails. And you don't have to do as much beads on here as you want. If you want to be able to see the threads, you can. But we're going to start making the tails for our new dream catcher. So I have this one here that was left over from the middle of the weaving. And then I'll have all of this extra that was still in the skein uh, when I finished. So I'm going to start pulling it out, making sure not to knot anything up. So let's see. Just kind of straighten it up. And I'm going to make two even and maybe one longer. Uh, that's what I have on the other dream catcher, just to add a little difference to it. So let's see. Or you maybe you want the middle one to be shorter, or maybe you want them all to be the same length, or maybe you don't want three and you just want two. That's okay too. So, or if you want to make them all even on the get go, and then you can go from there. So I have three strings cut out. I'm going to take my first one. I've already got it folded in half so that I have a loop and then the ends and it's perfectly even. So I'm going to take these ends and I'm going to put them around my thread and I'm trying to remember exactly how I did it. So I want 
this to be my front side and I'm gonna go down to the bottom here first. And what I did was split my threads up. I think I did it this way. So I wanna pull them through so that the loop will be on top. And I did it on either side of my weavings on the hoop. So just like this. And then I'm gonna take this loop and I'm gonna pull them back through, okay? And then I'm gonna slide them down and they'll go on just like that. Okay. And I kind of want them to where the black won't show, so I'm just moving this around. As you've probably already noticed, it's kind of hard to slide them down once you've got it on there. So I have that one slid down. And I'm going to do the same way. So whichever way you do it, it's fine. Just make sure you continue to do it the same way throughout so it looks even. So if you want the loop on the top or you want the loop underneath, whichever way is fine, just make sure you try to keep it even. So if you did it, the loop on top for the first one, do the loop on top for the other two. And that's what I did. So... Got that tangled a little bit. Let's pull that out. I'm going to take my other two. And I'm going to go around the center one. I generally do the bottom three. I'm going to pull that through so I can tighten it up. Go just like this. I'm going to slide that down all the way to the loop. So it just looks like one nice wrap okay like i like to keep that binding to the back so nobody sees what i did okay and then my last one it's going to be only yeah so you can do the same thing that i did on the other which is using that paper clip to make it easier to thread beads, it's up to you. I like to thread them with the two strands together. So that would definitely be helpful for me. If you wanna do beads on separate strands, you can certainly do that too. Um, most of the wider beads, you can do that without using the paper clip. I just find the paper clip makes things a little bit easier. Okay, so by that I mean Instead of having two strands of beads here, I'm gonna have one strand of beads. And I'm actually not gonna do a ton of beads on there. Um, I did beads from the loop all the way to the feathers on this one, and I like the way that it looks, but I kinda wanna do something a little bit different on this one. So I'm gonna take my paper clip and I liked this paper clip because it was one of the smaller ones and it was just easier the shorter length and it was easier to straighten it's so whatever you like take me a piece of tape just like I did before Oop. oh I messed up that piece of tape and it should your tape should come off of that wax paper pretty easily It was a trick we picked up during quarantine while we were trying to bag everything for y'all. Right, so I want to make sure these are as even as I'm going to get them. And I don't want to go all the way to the end of the thread anyway, because I'm going to use the thread to also put my feathers on. And I will show you how I'm going to do that. You can kind of see that here. I use the, th the thread to wrap it around the feathers here, and it's holding them on pretty well. Okay. So again, be careful not to cut the thread, but I'm gonna trim my tape here. so that it's easier to get it through the beads. And I think I'm gonna use mostly thicker beads. You have some skinny beads, you have some thick beads. 
play around it with it, have fun. Promote this thread. Play with it, have fun, do what you like. I think I'm gonna do, let's see. All right, I think I have a bit of a plan. So I'm gonna start stringing. I think I'm gonna do a few seed beads if I can get them on. Um, they're having a little struggle, so I think I'm going to do the thicker beads instead, just so I don't have to fight that. Alright, so I strung the beads how I like them on this one, but I don't want to keep going any further. I like it as it is. So I can leave it nice and tight up here and I can do my feathers right underneath it and make it super short. I can squish it down a little bit, tie a knot here, or just leave it and tie a knot at the bottom and then do my feathers there and have this blue here. Or if I want to keep them suspended, I can tie a knot here and then come down and do my feathers a little further. And I kind of like the idea of that. I'm not going to worry about a knot up here because when it's hanging, the gravity will keep it pulled down. But I am going to go ahead and do a knot here. And that's just a quick overhand knot. And I want to keep the trick here is to get it to where you want it. So since you're not doing one up here and it doesn't have to be super tight, you can move your beads out of the way, go about where you want it to be, and then just pull it through. I'm thinking here's a good, good one. So I'm gonna come down. Now, another trick with this is you don't wanna do one of the larger beads like this one at the bottom because the knot gotta be real thick to hold that one from falling. So I have a little seed bead here that's gonna keep that from falling down. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to go ahead and do my beads on all of these and then we're going to come back and fix your feathers onto your dream catcher. All right. Okay, so now I have my dream catcher completed. I did the web here with my beads in the center. I did the beads on my strings with the knots, and I kind of staggered this a little bit. So I have it pretty much starting on level with these two, all three of them, but I have the middle one kind of going down a little bit more because I want the feathers to dangle just a little bit further, and may even put a few more feathers on there. So I did not catch cut any of this extra string yet because I am not completed yet. I'm going to use this string to help attach my feathers onto it. So let's start with our feathers. So I have lots of different ones here. So the first part of it is to figure out how, what I want it to look like and how I want them to go. So let's start kind of sorting it out. And you have certain feathers in y'all's bags. I picked them out for you. Hopefully you like the color coordination. And you don't have to use all of them. You don't have to use any. If you just want to do lots of beads on yours, you can do that. If you don't want the dangles, you don't have to. Remember we said the thought process or the reason for the feathers was so that the good dreams had something soft to go down so that you could have them again later and they would be safe. But if that's not what you want, then that's okay too. You don't have to have feathers. Or if you're allergic, please don't use them. Let's see, let's do maybe the blue, the white, and the black in the center. I kind of like that. It has some good length to it. So blue and white. See if we have any more. Hmm. 
Maybe I want two black ones kind of in the center. So just kind of map it out however you think you'd like it. Let's do it this way. It's too even. You don't have to use all of them. You don't have to use any of them. That is up to you. So these are the three sets that I want to do. I have three strings. And you're going to take some of that tape you have on your wax paper. And you're going to use that to bind the feathers together. So let's kind of move these out of the way. We'll get back to them in a second. So I'm going to take these three and I'm going to lay them on the tape how I want them. And it's going to take up a little bit of the tip of the feather and that's okay. Oop, that one was turned backwards. No, that one's right. Let's see. Want the white to show, want the blue to show. Or do I just want black in the center? Let's just do black in the center and let's do white and blue on the edges. Kind of like that. Okay. So then I'm just going to take my tape and I'm going to do one fold this way. And I'm going to try to line that tape up as much as possible. But if you have a little bit of the sticky showing, it's okay. Because remember, we're going to use the string to wrap what's left of the thread to wrap around this tape, okay? So I'm gonna, I have it folded in half here, but I have a little bit of sticky. And so now I'm going to just try to tighten that up and make it as small as I can. Be careful not to break your feathers, the center spine. Okay, keep it as tight as I can get it. It doesn't have to be super tight. And then I'm going to trim this excess up top. So I have some right here that the feathers are not in, it's just the tip of it. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to trim here. And it doesn't have to be perfect because you're not going to see this part. You're not going to see this part. And that's just holding the feathers firmly together. So that was the string. And then I'm going to do my center one. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to map out about how I want it. And let's see, I have some smaller black ones. See how we like that. Maybe one here. And then. Maybe one more behind it. Let's see. Nice little trio with feathers. It's really pretty. I think what I'm going to do actually for this one, it's okay to change it. That's what I'm doing. I'm changing it as I go and deciding how I like it or what I don't like about it. It's not permanent yet. It's not on my dream catcher. You can change your mind at this point. I'm going to do the long one, a short one, another long one. And I'm just going to pile these feathers together. So this is my center one. So I can be a little bit bigger. I think I'm going to do all black in the center. I think that's enough feathers. Okay. And so then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come back. I'm going to fold it over. And then I'm going to roll it. I'm going to try to keep it nice and tight. But again, it's not the final look, it's not the final result. So if it's not perfectly tight, it doesn't have to be. It is okay, you won't even see this part later. I'm gonna trim the top. See, I have a little piece of feather sticking out. That's okay. No one's gonna know any different. 
That's my center. And then I think yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna go with these two, the other end, and one more time. Last time, I'm gonna take my tape and I'm gonna layer on my feathers as I like them. Okay. And then I'm gonna fold over in half and then I'm gonna roll it and make it nice and tight. I have a little bit sticky, remember, on the other side that it didn't fold over yet. And if you accidentally do, grab another piece of tape and go over it, it's okay. Again, no one's gonna see this part. This is just for you. You'll be the only one who knows it's there. It's to help secure these feathers so they don't come loose while you're sleeping and fall on your face and tickle your nose. That is it, okay? And so I'm gonna do this one a little bit backwards so you can see. So it's gonna be a little upside down for me. Okay. So I'm gonna come here and I wanna put it as close to these beads as I can. And if you can do that on your own without uh, this extra little step that I'm gonna show you, um, kind of my cheat a little bit, then that's okay. I'm gonna take one more piece of tape, okay? And I'm gonna put it down. And on top of it, I'm gonna put my string. And you can do this up against the beads like this if you want, or you can come down further if you want a little bit of string in between. That is okay. In fact, I think that's what I'm gonna do on this one. Maybe about an inch, inch and a half. Boop. I'm gonna put my string on my tape, and I'm doing it on the edge of this tape here. So unlike the other one where I kind of did it in the middle, I'm putting this on the edge. If you put it in the middle, you can do the same rollover you did on the, with the feathers. And I'm gonna put it again, my feathers against the string here. And then I'm just gonna roll it. And I have it at the base of this tape, but if you go a little bit further down, that's okay. Again, no one will know. And that's the beauty. No one will know but you. So we're gonna do one more time. And this time we're not gonna trim the top. Because if we do, then we're cutting the feathers off the string and we don't want that. Okay? So we have it, the, the feathers secure on the string right where we want them. And we have all this extra string left underneath it. So we're gonna take it, the string, and we're gonna start wrapping. You can wrap around the base of the feathers Covering up that tape, like I said, no one's gonna be able to see it. And we're gonna go all the way up that tape. All the way up that tape. And I really like the ombre effect of this string. It looks really cool, multiple colors. We're just gonna keep going until you're happy with it. Uh, you can go up further than the tape if you really want to. You may have to do a few wraps because um, if not, it's just going to look a little silly. So I'm pinching this tape in. Oop. Moving it so you can see it. And I'm keeping it nice and tight as I go around. Now you got to be careful with this because at the tip here, it's it might slip off this tape. And then it'll look kind of raggedy. See, it just slipped there. So we don't want it to look raggedy. And you can also trim the tape if you need to. Or, and my favorite trick, pushing the tape down a little bit to hide it some. You can do that too. And you're just going to wrap until you're happy. I've got that all folded in and all pinched in here. Kind of squished down a little bit. I'm gonna hold that with my thumb and my finger to pinch it closed. So then when I wrap, you can't see it and it doesn't look like it's sliding off. And these threads will help keep that together when I let go. 
okay? So when you get it wrapped, this part's a little tricky because you got to hold two, so many pieces. So I'm going to hold it down. Ooh. See how my thread slipped off here? And that's because I was trying to hold it in too many places. So I'm just going to undo it. I haven't tied anything yet. This is okay. And I'm going to go to about where I'm happy with it. And then I'm just going to wrap again. This isn't rocket science. This isn't life or death. If you messed up once, undo where you didn't like and keep going again. It is okay. I promise. Or if you get frustrated with it, set it down for a minute and keep going. Mom called you to do the dishes. It's okay to set it down. Um, I had to set it down earlier because I am doing this at my job and sometimes things come up and we have to do things. So I'm getting about to the point where it was hard to hold last time. So I'm trying to be a little more vigilant with how I pinch it and where I hold it. You're going to take your left of your string and you're gonna do an overhand knot to close this up. So we're gonna go over one more time once you're happy with it, and then knot it with your overhand knot, and then pull it as tightly to this as you can. And if you accidentally did it and you can see a little bit of that tape, it's okay to maybe wrap another one and then knot again. And it's also okay to maybe trim that tape down, but if you choose to trim that tape down, be careful you don't accidentally cut the string. And if you do, that's okay. Just take it off of here and put a new piece on and try again, okay? Now I'm not gonna trim it just yet. I wanna finish them all first. Look how nice that looks. And if there is a tiny piece of tape at the top showing, you may not be able to see it when you hang it anyway. So don't stress too much, especially with your first time doing this. So just a quick, that's what that completed look looks like. I think that's quite nice. So I'm just gonna continue with my other two. And it's okay if it takes a minute. And I'm going to eyeball about where I'm going to put it. So remember, I wanted this one to be a little bit further down. So I think right about here will look great. So my feathers are going to start right as the feather on this one ended, or the wrap on this one ended. So I'm gonna do the same trick. I'm gonna take a piece of tape and if it's not exact, that's okay. If you're one of those teens that likes things exactly measured, that's fine. Get a ruler and have fun with it. It's okay. But if you're one who doesn't mind a little bit of random, then you don't have to worry about it. So I have it on the edge here and I put my thread down and then I put my feathers on top and I'm gonna take that tape and I'm gonna do what I did before and just wrap it. Then you don't have to use all this tape if you wanna cut it a little smaller, you can. Just make sure it can go around once. And that also makes it easier because you don't have to hold the feathers onto the string while you're trying to wrap. Just freeze up your hand. And again, no one's gonna know that there's tape there. It's your little secret. So this one's gonna be a little bit easier because I have a little more thread on this one to work with for the wrapping. So I could get fancier with this one if I wanted to because I have a little bit more. So if I wanted to do something at the top to maybe hide the top of that tape, I could. So just keep that in mind while you're making this. If you want more thread at the end, you might want to move your beads up or your feathers up so you have enough room. Or be mindful when you're making 
the length of thread for the edge here, for the end here. I really like this ombre look here. I think it looks really nice wrapped. It looks cool as the webbing too. So this is really nice. Some of you have ombre thread, some of you have solid. And I like the solid too, I think it looks really nice. All of it looks good to me. Um, so I'm just gonna do my basic here, went all the way to the top, and then I do that overhand. And remember, I use that overhand, kind of use my fingers to help me with that. And then I just come through the hole left by my fingers and I can pinch that thread there and push it down. Because I'm already holding this thread here. So sometimes it's a little harder to do it if I'm, if I'm holding multiple places. Oop. I'm gonna try to get that nice and tight. And there's that one. And then my last one, once again, my little trick. And I'm gonna go about an inch and a half, which should be about right here. I like that. Again, if you are concerned about it being specific and even, go ahead and measure that. That is okay to measure. Just like I said, it was okay to measure your web here. If you like being things being precise, there's nothing wrong with that. You go ahead and do that. I don't really mind if things are a little bit off, so I don't measure. Once again, I did my tape and have my thread out to the side and I'm just going to wrap. This one has some wayward feathers here. Kind of want them down. I don't want them peeking out of my thread, so I'm going to push them down before I start wrapping. Careful not to break your feathers because these spines are pretty easy to break. I think I might have pinched one a little bit too tight here. Okay, and I'm, I'm about where I'd like to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my knot. And so now I'm going to trim my edges a little bit. Again, you gotta be careful here because you don't wanna accidentally cut the knot or the other piece of thread. It doesn't have to be completely flush. 
You're not really going to see that from hanging on the wall above your bed or wherever you're going to put this. And if you are concerned about the knots coming out, get a little bit of glue. It can be a school glue. It doesn't have to be very fancy glue. And put a dot, small doll of the glue over that knot and let it dry before you hang it up. And that'll make sure those knots stay. You can do the same thing with the knot in your, your web. If you did not trim it, now is the time to trim it. Be careful not to go too, too small because you don't want to cut that knot. And that is all she wrote. That is your dream catcher. Had a piece of wayward tape that I had cut stuck to that one. Just make sure you don't have any pieces of ring thread or an extra feather hanging anywhere. And that is your dream catcher. So your dream catcher should look like this or something similar. Uh, this one I put more beads on. I used more colorful feathers. In the center one, I put a whole bunch of feathers because I wanted it to be very colorful. And this one I put beads on the center and I did not do that here. So it's whatever you like. Go crazy with it, have fun, look up different patterns. If you do the first one and you're like, oh, I wanna do another, and you go get the materials, do another pattern, try it out. See what, you know, tickles your fancy on this one. There is no wrong way, really, um, but remember to be respectful because this is somebody else's culture and we never want to make somebody feel like we're making fun of their culture or inappropriately using their culture or items from their culture, but it's okay to enjoy things and keep tales or beliefs alive. I'm really excited about this. I hope you like it too. Don't forget to sign up for next month's Teen Arts and Crafts Tote. We are going to be doing winter hat ornaments and hanging with my gnomies ornaments, so little little gnome ornaments. It'll be really neat. So sign up by November 30th to receive December's teen tote between the 15th and the 30th. Thank you for joining me to make dream catchers. <laughs>